I've always found the lowercase letters to be cuter than their uppercase counterparts. I find the uppercase letters tend to look more rigid and structured because of all the straight sides. But just because lowercase letters are cute doesn't mean it's easier for quilling. It's actually much more challenging to deal with all these curves. If you'd like to try quilling the lowercase letter A, visit my blog and download the free template. In case you didn't know, I also offer a free template for the uppercase letter A shown in another video called Quilling Letter A How to Outline. So if you haven't tried quilling letters yet, what are you waiting for? And let me know what you think in the comments below. I want to know if you think it's too difficult to deal with or whether you're really enjoying the look regardless of the effort. I haven't written a book of lowercase letters yet because I want to know if there's enough interest first. To be honest with you, it takes a while for me to write a book of quilling patterns. And if I get an overwhelming response from people telling me they want this, then I'm up for the challenge. In your free download, you'll see two pages and I'm just going to set this one aside for now and we'll come back to that later. This sheet here gives you all the measurements of the letter A and as you can see the number one corresponds with the number one here so you know exactly what part of the letter you're tracing. So I'm just going to lay my strip on top of this template and take my quilling needle and basically score along all those lines. When you come to here you see the scissor icon and that's where you're going to cut. Now if you ever came across my, one of my other patterns in my book and there's a return arrow it just means to pick this up and continue measuring along the second row be, until you see another scissor icon. After you've finished scoring along these lines onto your strip it's time to fold. Now when you go to fold, make sure that your fingers are touching these edges so that you bring them align in alignment with one another. So in other words, we don't want to fold a skew. So in other words, something like that. Make sure your fingers help you press these edges together so that we're folding exactly 90 degree along the fold line. When you fold it at a perfect 90 degrees, what you're going to find is that when you go to glue, everything is lining up. You want it to be completely in sync with one another. If you had it just a little askew, one would be up and you'd be forcing yourself when you go to glue. Now that we've got all our score lines folded, let's go and shape it to this letter. So as you can imagine, the side for number one is right here and number two goes up and now we need to fold it the opposite way to start number three. When we go to make this curve here, we could use a quilling needle, but actually I prefer to use a crochet hook because I prefer this larger circumference. I find it easier to manipulate a larger curve like that, but it's up to you. And what I do is I grab along that fold line and just soften to that next fold, which is right there. So as I soften, and what I mean by soften is I'm just drawing the tool against my finger and, you know, just kind of drawing it along the length of that strip. And what that does is it softens all the fibers. And you can see here that there still needs to be some more. So instead of just softly doing it, now I'm really giving it a little bit of pressure against my finger. You can see how it makes a much more acute angle. Well, not acute angle, but more of a quite, a quite a bit more dramatic curve to that. And then I want it to dip a little bit more. You can see how it's not quite dipping right there. So I'm just going to pick that up and just rub right there. You can see that taking shape. And now that I have that part done along the bottom, you can see it's almost too tight here. That's actually quite easy to fix. We'll just kind of soften the fibers back because paper pulp is quite forgiving. 
and that's pretty much matching that angle. So now I'm going to fold the opposite way. And soften in that direction. And what I'm doing here is placing it against my finger and really rubbing a little bit harder because I want a distinctive arc right there. Number five is pretty straightforward. And then we come down to six where we want to keep this part of the strip straight. So we're just going to soften to about there. And I would say at least a little bit more than halfway. So I'm going to pick up my strip and just soften a little bit more than halfway. And then I tend to just put it back down to gauge how far I am. So a little bit longer throughout the strip and very gentle, very gentle. It's a very soft arc here. So you can see as I follow the arc that it's coming out here. That tells me that this part of the strip here needs more softening. Just gentle. We don't want to put the softening into all of this part that's supposed to be straight. And that's how we tame your dragon. Well, your paper which is a lot easier than a dragon, don't you think? So I think pretty much that's there. I'm going to be okay with that. Now for this little piece, and you can decide whether, because it's only two segments, you can decide whether you want to go this way or the other way. It doesn't matter really. But I tend to, of the joins that I'm going to make, I tend to put the join on the bottom side because visually when people look at a quilling piece, they're they tend to look from above more than from below. So any chance I get, I try to hide my seam on the bottom. So in other words, I want, you know, this part to start at this part right here, at this corner, not that corner. And I can tell right off the bat, I need to rub quite a bit more significantly right there. We want the strip to basically be as docile as possible before we go to glue so that gluing is going to be easier. I think that's pretty much it. I forgot to mention the paper that I'm using for all my letters is the thickness of a quarter inch here and I'm cutting it out of Kensen Miton paper which is a little bit thicker than conventional quilling paper. I find it holds its shape over a larger area where the expanse is not held by any shapes but really it's just on edge by itself. To glue this corner together I'm just going to use a plastic card and run a small bead of glue down the side. And then I'm going to touch the glue with my edge just a little bit. Right there, just that amount. And bring those edges together. And with my two fingers, I'm again 
making sure that these edges align. We don't want them off shifted from one another. And when I'm rubbing with my tool here like this, I'm basically kind of helping the corners align right there. Now I'm just fussing a little bit because there is a bit of an angle to this this part of the shape. It's not straight across, it's more down a little bit. So I'm just kind of gently using my fingers to squeeze exactly where I need that shape to go down. And that's how you get it to tame that way. Now we're ready to glue the outline to the card. So let's bring back the other template. If you have my book, Quilling Letters, you know that all the letters are on a six inch square. That was so that it's easy for you to align onto scrapbook cardstock, which is typically 12 by 12. And if you cut it in half and then fold that in half, you have an exact card. Because this is a lowercase letter and I plan on giving it to someone who whose name starts with the letter A, I'm just going to do it to a onto a eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So how, well not paper, this is cardstock actually. It's ivory colored cardstock. And what I've done is I've cut it in half and then I folded it in half. And now I've got two cards ready to go. Then I found a sunny window and I put this card against my outline. And when you see it through the sun, you can see the outline on the opposite side. And I basically use some removable tape and tape down those sides, turned it over, and then I used a dried up pen and basically inscribed heavily onto this outline. And when you remove the template, then you've got your outline traced onto your card. Okay, now that my quilling paper is shaped and my outline has been traced to my card, I'm ready to glue these two together. The glue that I tend to like using most is Aline's Original Tacky Glue because it's super thick and it dries clear. And everyone's got their own type of glue that they like, but this is tends to work felt well for me. So I'm just gonna put a bead down on this plastic card. And this plastic card is actually very thin. So I'm going to use it to slide underneath some of the strips as you'll see in a moment. And I'm just going to smear this stream down into a flatter puddle. And that way we don't get any glue going up the sides of your strip. I'm just going to work on the inner shape first. So I'm gonna put the outer shape off to the side Turn this guy to the side so I can hopefully see the outline. I'm sure you guys are going to be working in better light surroundings than I've got. All right, that part was pretty easy, wasn't it? So now that we've got the inner shape down, we're going to work on the outer shape. And I'm going to secure this part first and then this part second. So I'm just going to dip the straight parts into the glue first. And because my light is going the other way and it's easier for me to see there, I'm just gonna turn it around And I forgot to do this, but actually I have some post-it notes and I had actually meant to show you a way to help align your straight edges because your eye is going to be able to see how these 
edges here align and luckily let's get this guy out of the way first luckily my eyeballs seem to have aligned that part okay but that's kind of a key part because your eye is going to figure it out that you know this one's a little bit this way that way so you know it's that perfectionist in me I guess and luckily for this example it's pretty pretty okay and then as this part comes to here then you know again it's going to help me visually align that perfect and not a little here not a little there post-it notes I don't know what we did without that And again, hopefully you guys are going to have better lighting than me in here. So I guess where that's going to be. Sometimes what I do is I, I kind of use the motion with my hands before I actually have any glue there. And then that way it's, it's almost like, um, I don't know, like a practice cut. So I'm practice gluing. <laughs> and so I'm just going to slip this card underneath just half of the curve. And then that way I'm not stressed out about the whole curve and needing to glue that down. I find if you work in stages, then it's less hyperventilation, I guess. You just don't need that kind of stress in your life, do we? So again, I'm just going to see where this is going to end up before I actually have the glue on the strip. It's getting a little warm here, so my glue is drying a little faster than normal. And again, because my post-it note is here, it's helping me visually align that. Now, this guy's in my way, so I'm just going to bend that corner because it's going to be forgiving. It's going to allow me to tell it where to go for now. And I want that part to be glued like that. And I'm just going to put down some fresh glue because I'm not liking this skin that's developing on my puddle. Anytime you have little cobwebs of glue, that's an indication to put down some new fresh glue. Fresh glue is really key. You don't want little spider web parts to have to deal with afterwards. And for the sake of the video, I'm just using the same card, but you know, if you have more time and patience, it's probably best to use a brand new card or not a brand new card, but one that's clean anyway. That's what I like about using the plastic. I can reuse it again and again. So you can see this is where that spider web part I was talking about is right here, but luckily that part's dried, so it's easy enough to take away. So let's affix this straight edge now. And I only want to dip the glue just on that straight portion, right? So right on that corner.
And I'm just going to use this piece to just hold it in place so that my strip here doesn't, you know, go too short or go too long and just as it meets up with that other end of the strip. Because this curve, it does provide some flexibility when you go to put it down. So I just want to make my, I just want to make my placement to be true. Again, I guess it's kind of warm here. Spidey sense is tingling here. And sometimes before you press all the way, I just use like a, this straight edge just to make sure it's, you know, this is the straightest part. So I might as well borrow some help from this guy. Now, just to finish it off, I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of glue on my tool and brush it alongside that corner piece. Then bring those two edges together to finish off your letter A. My friend loves peacock feathers and I thought I would incorporate a feather into this lowercase letter A. And I don't have any measurements to give you guys. And I wasn't actually going to film this portion, but as I went along, I thought, well, I'll just explain this part as best as I can and show you how I go about eyeballing elements like this. And I apologize, please don't get frustrated with me. I just don't measure these things. I've found that when I try to go scientific, it's kind of like the two sides of my brain are arguing with one another. So if you'll bear with me, you can watch how I work and I'll try my best to explain what it is that I'm eyeballing to achieve the results that I'm getting. Because if I were to measure this, it would take me too long to set up a pattern and things like that. This is just more of a, a one-off that I'm throwing out and I'm hoping that maybe you'll still learn something from watching how I go about thinking about what I'm doing, okay? So I started looking at the letter A and because this is such a vertical area, I felt that that was the best part of where the feather could come out. Now, if I had known I was going to make a feather, I probably would have moved my letter A down a little bit but I think she'll be forgiving of me um, making it a little off center. Maybe I'll extend this down a little further. I'm not sure just yet. That's how a lot of these things are. Sometimes I just don't plan that far ahead. So to get this stroke here, and also nothing here is glued down. Everything is just sort of eyeballed in place. Right now, the only thing that's glued down is the letter A. So to achieve that stroke right there, and who knows, maybe by the time I shoot the cover for this video, this card might look completely different. Uh, that's the part of the creative process that makes it so wild and unplanned. And I find that, you know, that's how my best work comes about. So basically um, ignoring that part, I just kind of soften a strip and see, do I like the arc that's coming out of here? So let me just take this out of the way and hopefully that's going to clean up the visual palette here. So I start by laying down the strip and imagining, okay, I think I like the feather coming to about there. So I'm just going to stip my paper here place it back on the letter and put my fingers where I expect to 
intersect there. And try to imagine having that arc continuing. And when I looked up some images of feathers online, I just kind of mimicked how that shape looks. And how it looks to me, I'm visualizing, is having it kind of feathery soft, disappearing into nothingness. So to achieve that, all I did was taper the edge of the paper. Now, the, another, the other one I, was, I had actually made was quite a lot larger, so my ratio might be off. I think maybe because I'm trying to make it a little bit closer to the letter and not so high. So bear with me. I'm just kind of <laughs> figuring out as I go. I think, I think I still prefer that longer piece. And that's the thing, you know, you can still, it's just paper. Uh, this is all sort of playing as you go kind of go along. If it's too short, too too long, it's really easy to just adjust. Don't get locked into using that strip just because you cut it. I think I still like that original one. I think because I was using my phone to look at a feather and of course right now I'm using it to film so <laughs> I can't have both. But that's how I created that arc. And so then I just need to mirror on the other side and again just taper and the beauty of tapering is it's kind of cool when you look at it from the side it just looks like the strip is fading into nothingness and I quite like that effect I did it first on some fireworks that I made for a Mickey Mouse project See how this one, to me now, it, it looks obviously too long for that. So it's really easy to adjust for that. Just trim off the excess. And these are the little bits and pieces that you end up throwing away, but it's kind of worth it. Anyway, so the first time I ever did like a tapered kind of look was for some fireworks on a Mickey Mouse project. I'll leave a link below to, to lead you to my blog where you can watch what I did back then quite a number of years ago. So that's all I did with some more strips all around it. Just basically tapered it and softened it to give that feathery outlining look. Now I don't know how this is all going to turn out later, but I'm just gonna set that part aside and explain how I did this inner part. So to create this inside shape here, I've got quite a number of colors right next to one another. I'm going to start with the dark blue here. And what is that? About an inch, I guess. Just going to soften the strip. Okay, I don't think Maybe that's a bit too long. And when you rub like this, the ends will come up and meet up with one another. I'm going to soften the teal strip. And I'm just going to cut. It's a little longer than I need right now, but I just need it to be a little smaller to make it easier to handle. I'm going to soften that strip and 
this is what I don't know what you would call this shape a, a rounded heart I guess I'm just going to add some glue on the bottom of that I'm just going to smear it slightly to get the glue on the full edge of that light blue and then try to imagine where you need to cut that put your fingers there and it's a little warm here tonight so my glue is drying faster than normal and make those two edges meet up Then I'm going to do the orange shape, which is kind of an oval, kind of like an egg, actually. And I don't want to build up all my seams right there, so I'm just going to offset that a little bit. Why? I don't, I'm not sure. I think because it's kind of like when I was crocheting and if you, any of you guys are crocheters out there, you don't want to increase your circles in the same area. The, you'll see a join eventually. So I guess that's the same concept. I don't know. So now I'm just going to adjust until I see that sort of egg ratio. And with my fingers, I'm just going to notch right there so I can see where I want to cut. Now that I see the two side by side, I realize I've made this one quite a bit larger, but I guess you, you guys can adjust as you see fit for your project. Now I'm just going to circle that orange with a green. It, it kind of reminds me of, you know, those, there's some cooling strips that have two colors on either side. So I guess this is kind of like making your own. And in this case, I'm going to offset that join back in the middle again. And, you know, it's going to be hidden by the time you glue it down to here. No one's going to see that. Oh, and then in this case, because my green is surrounding the orange, I actually want to put glue along the entire strip. And in this case, we can smear it with this edge of the green. Again, I'm just using my fingernail to notch where I'm guessing it's needing to end, where it's going to butt up against the other edge. And again, if yours doesn't meet up, it's not a big deal. It's going to be completely hidden, mostly. And that's how I created that guy, but obviously larger. See, this is what I mean. I, I just kind of eyeballed things as I went and because I don't have measurements, don't get upset with me. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed watching me make the feather anyway. I'm pretty sure it's obvious by now that 
I changed up the letter to highlight it a bit more. I really wanted the letter to stand out from the feather, so I outlined it in orange instead. It picks up some of the orange in the middle of the feather. And if you're curious how I did the outline in the light green here, just look at the letter R video. I detail how to do that with the clean corners. 